The Bible says where the Word of God is, there's power. In the book of Proverbs it says, where the Word of a king is, there's power. Amen. And we certainly uh, have a king in our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings, and He is the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. And there is only one God. The devils fear and tremble. And don't try to divide God up into six parts or seven parts or eight or five or four or any other number. God is one. Amen. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. The God of the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. Amen. The only difference is he robed himself in flesh. Praise God. He robed himself in flesh and became a man. And he laid down his very own life and shed his precious blood for you and I. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Praise God. I am so thrilled today. All right. We're going to get into Acts chapter 22. We're going to read verses 1 through 16. Uh, we're going to start at Acts chapter 22. Uh, we've been studying the book of Acts. I want you to know, though, the book of Acts is not just a history book. Oh yeah, it's a true history book, but it's also a true doctrine book. Many people try to say, well, uh, the book of Acts is wonderful, but that was 2,000 years ago, Brother Tomko. Uh, how in the world can you expect people today to get baptized in Jesus' name? Don't you know that everybody else baptizes some, some other way? Uh, and to receive the Holy Ghost by speaking in other tongues? That is a strange thing. Well, no, it's not strange if you know the Bible. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You just got to dig in and make sure that you don't make the mistake that many people do to think that the book of Acts is just a history book. <coughs> Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, men and brethren and fathers, hear ye my defense which I make it now unto you. <clears throat> when they heard that he spoke in the evil tongue to them, they kept the more silent, and he said, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I, I pursue this way unto the, the death, binding and delivering into the presence of both men and women. As also the high priest shall bear me witness in all the state of the elders, from whom also I receive letters unto the brothers, and went to Damascus to bring them which were fair bound. And to be or to be punished. Verse number six. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. <clears throat> and I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying to and to be Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And they were, and, and they that were with me saw indeed the light, and, and were afraid. And they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go to Damascus, and there it, it shall be told these all things which are appointed for thee to do. Verse number 11. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And what I said not is a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came 
came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of my Father, who hath chosen thee, that thou shouldst know his will, and see that uh, just one, and shouldst hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. All right, verse 16 is the last one for tonight's lesson. And now why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What's the name of the Lord, church? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. All right, Jesus. Amen. The name that's above every name, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that he is the Lord, to the glory of God, his Father. Well, it's uh, good to be gathered together here in God's house. Uh, Paul was uh, uh, warned time and time again not to go to Jerusalem. Uh, but uh, like many of us, as we get older, we realize that we don't have that much longer to live. And we want to uh, do everything we possibly can do for God before it's our time to go. And Paul was really no different. Uh, he had wrote uh, lots of epistles and he had worked a lot of miracles yes he'd been beaten up uh, with 39 stripes three times everybody say three times three times he'd been beaten with rods uh, once he'd been stoned to death so they after they stoned him they just threw a bunch of rocks on top of him and when the, the disciples came along all they saw was a, a bunch of rocks with maybe a couple of fingers and a toe sticking out and they threw the rocks off, and there lay the Apostle Paul, and uh, they gathered around him, and while they were praying for him, uh, God rose him from the dead. Amen. So uh, he had been through a lot of suffering. Uh, he mostly at the head of the Jews. We don't like to think about the Jews today as being someone that were bad, uh, but the Jews back in that day, and some of them still yet today, don't think much about Jesus Christ. In fact, if you ask them about him, uh, many of them would say that he was nothing more than just a prophet at best. But he certainly wasn't the Messiah. And so uh, they missed the mark. If you miss the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, you've missed everything that's important on earth. There's nothing more important for any human being to realize. It doesn't matter how much money you make, how fancy the house you live in, uh, what kind of a car you drive, and none of that matters. The only thing that really matters is uh, have you known Jesus? Are you close to him? And do you recognize that he's your Messiah? And he's the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Well, they didn't recognize that, and uh, they didn't want to accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And Paul had now converted to uh, Christianity, now, he didn't leave Judaism behind uh, for the greatest extent of it. He still kept most of the law, uh, but he didn't encourage anybody else to. And many of the Jews that were baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, still kept the law. but And uh, still circumcised their male, male children. Uh, but the uh, Gentiles, like you and I, we don't have to keep the law of Moses. And we don't have to circumcise our male children. If you want to, that's fine, but you don't have to. Amen. Remember, Abraham was found to be a man of faith while he was uncircumcised. So the circumcision was just something that God did to make the children of Israel different than anybody else on the face of the earth. So uh, Paul was uh, in a transitional state between uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And he was starting to preach Christ, that he's the Messiah the long-awaited Savior. Unfortunately, they thought he would be like King David, that he would be a reigning king, and that he would rule over them and, 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 and fight off the Roman Empire and make Israel a free straight state. But God had no intentions of doing any such thing. Jesus made it clear. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight and we'd win. Amen. If the apostles of Jesus Christ 
and Jesus Christ decided to fight against the Roman Empire, guess who would have lost? The Roman Empire would have definitely lost. And Jesus could walk on water, and he could turn the water into wine, yes. and if he wanted to, he could turn the Roman soldiers' blood into wine inside their body. And when God could have done anything, but he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So Paul's out here now, and he's fighting for the truth. He's fighting for the truth. Uh, but one thing that we need to recognize is he's not forgetting to tell his story. Uh, when he's uh, standing up before the Jews, they've arrested him and uh, turned him over to the Romans. And uh, he's asked the Roman a chief, a, 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 a soldier there, if he could speak. And they gave him the license to speak. And this is what he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. He started talking to them. And he started telling them about his story. He said, I'm a man just like you. I was born as Jew. I was born in Tarsus in the city of Cilicia. And I was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Most people know that Gamaliel was one of the most outstanding teachers uh, of the law in Jerusalem school at the university uh, ever. And he was just a wonderful guy. He was still there. Uh, when the apostles were doing signs and wonders and miracles. And Gamaliel actually saved the apostles uh, from getting killed on a number of occasions. So Gamaliel was a very smart man. And one thing he said, he said, why are you fighting against the apostles? If this thing be of God, then uh, you would find yourself fighting against God. And if it's not of God, if the church of Jesus Christ is not of God, uh, then it will fail. And he cited different circumstances where uh, several people had tried to start an insurrection amen, in Israel to get rid of the Roman Empire. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of Christians wanted to get rid of the Roman Empire, uh, but uh, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't God's will. He expects us to learn to live under the law and do the things that we're supposed to do. Now, we never do anything we're not supposed to do, but we always do what we're supposed to do. And so he said, I persecuted people to the death, and I received letters from the chief priest, and I went and arrested people. I threw them in jail. I even was watching while Stephen was killed. But he said, one day, and that's what I like about Apostle Paul and Saul at this time, he said, a God was looking down from heaven and he saw my heart. He saw the foolish things I was doing. I was involved in the wrong things. I was going to the wrong places. And they were telling me the wrong things and I was believing them. And I was going out and uh, fighting against the truth. And so he went to Damascus to arrest people and bring them back to Jerusalem to be punished. And uh, he heard a sound uh, unto him a great light knocked him to the ground, if you will. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto him, You see, he recognized that he was the Lord. That nobody, a uh, big bright light don't shine all over the place and knock you to the ground and blind you without that being some very high power. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? So he didn't know what was going on. And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. So he was recognizing him as the Lord. Amen. How many lords are there? One. There's only one Lord. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. Amen. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice to, of him that spake to me. So he had a group of people with him, kind of a, a bunch of rebels. They were arresting Christians. Jewish people, no doubt. And they heard, uh, they saw the light though, but they didn't hear what the message was. And I said unto him, what shall I do, Lord? And he said, arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of the things which are appointed for thee to do. You see, sometimes God has to get your attention before he can save you. No matter how religious you may think you are, uh, sometimes he has to get you to the point where you're empty. You just simply feel empty. 
And uh, uh, that's, that's what he's doing here. Now look at verse 11. And when I could not see, in other words, he's blind. I'll tell you, that'll wake you up. You're either riding a horse or donkey or you're walking with a bunch of men. The next thing you know, you're on the ground and in bright light and you hear a voice and you get scared. And now you get up and you can't see. I mean, I mean, I know that there's various people here today that worry about their sight. In fact, I'm one of them. I want to make sure that I keep my eyesight as long as I possibly can. Amen. And I want it to be as good as it possibly can be. But here's a man that was going in the wrong direction. And God, it be sad for God to have to blind you for you to find the truth. Wouldn't that be sad? But that's exactly what God had to do to Saul. He had to make him a blind man. And, and, and let him go without food for three, three days there. So three days and three nights he went without food. He was blind. He could not see anything. And the people that were with him led him by the hand uh, to uh, Damascus. And uh, uh, it was a sad day for him because uh, he went into a place, a street called Straight, and there he was. And one Ananias, which would be a Jewish Christian, someone who was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. He was a devout man, according to the law, so he was a Jewish person that loved the law, and he had a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. Came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see the just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be a witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. So uh, that still wasn't good enough. Just to have a, a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, a life-changing experience. I've heard people say, oh, Jesus changed my life. He really changed my life. Yeah, but uh, did you get up and get baptized in Jesus' name? Hello? Praise God. And did you do like Paul did when he met the Master? Amen. And when he repented of his sins and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And uh, then the man of God stepped out there. Amen. And uh, Ananias told him. And he said, now why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, of course, and wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Church, that's one reason why people today uh, cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because they're too full. Their time is full. Amen. Their day is taken up. It's either their family, or their car, or their video games, or their computer games. Or whatever it is, the reason why they can't find their way to God is because they're not empty. You see, Paul had all those things. He was going where he wanted to go. He was doing what he wanted to do. But he wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. Amen. God had a plan for him. God has a plan for each and every one of us as well. Amen. Amen. And as long as you're doing what you want to do and going where you want to go, uh, you are going to have an empty vessel. I'm so proud of you that are here, here tonight in church. What a wonderful place for you to be. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to come to God's house and Amen. hear the wonderful word of God. And uh, when people out there in the world uh, get really hungry, the Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Amen. Amen. Sister Icy, and she was having a little trouble. God healed her. And then she got real serious about getting the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. She got a wake up call from the Lord, just like Paul. And she realized how empty she was. She needed the Holy Ghost. And when we said, anybody here want the Holy Ghost? She lifted up her hand. And pow, we went back and prayed for her. Of the Holy Ghost, just like that. Praise God. Amen. If you're hungry, you can get the Holy Ghost here.
here tonight. If you came here, your vessel is full. God has no way to put anything into a full vessel. You have to be like Paul. You have to recognize that if I gain the whole world, and if I do everything I want all day long, and go everywhere I want, and spend my money any way I want to, I can do whatever I want. If that's your idea, then you're too full to get the Holy Ghost. You need to be empty. Praise God. Usually, when my gas tank starts going down towards the E, I start looking for a gas station. Amen. What, what, how smart would it be if my gas tank was on full and I only went about two or three miles to pull into the gas station, open up my lid and, and open up the cap, and hit the button and put 50 cents into my tank. Would that make sense? It wouldn't make any sense. No. If you want to fill something up, and the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, in other words, the, the birthday of the church, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Praise God. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God because they had been praying for seven days, day and night, asking God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I didn't know what it is. They didn't even know what they were going to get. But Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry until they got the Holy Ghost. They didn't even know what it was. Praise God. So they just went and tarried. And brother, and they weren't there very long, Sister Icy. And they had a tingling sensation start at the top of their head, went through the body, down out their feet. And some of them had a tingling sensation in their feet, went up the top of their body, down the top of their head. Next thing you know, they're jumping, and they're shouting, and they're worshiping. All night long, they worshiped and danced. And the next morning, they poured out into the streets of Jerusalem from the upper room. And the people thought they were crazy. They were worshiping and running and jumping. And the people said, these people are drunk. Amen. We've had that happen around here quite a few times. People running all over the place. People jumping up and down. People getting excited. People speaking in tongues. People filled with the Holy Ghost. And they said, they're a bunch of drunks. And Peter stood up. He said, these are not drunk as you suppose. See, it's about the third hour of the day. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. People don't get drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. He said, but this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel four or five hundred years ago. Amen. That in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will see dreams. And your young men will see visions. And all my servants and all my handmaidens. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God, on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter said, For the promises unto you here in Jerusalem, and the promises unto your children here in Jerusalem, and unto those that are far off, which is Barmouth, West Virginia, it's China, it's India, amen, it's Australia, amen, it's every nation under heaven. He said, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did Peter testify and exhort, say, save yourselves. Save yourselves. And don't think you're full and you can do whatever you want to. Amen. Come to God empty and say, God, I want whatever you've got for me. Praise God. And if you come like Saul then, he'll turn you into a Paul. Glory to God. As we close out here tonight, uh, I believe that Acts chapter 22 is a very powerful portion of Scripture. Amen. It tells us how Paul explained how he found God. And that's your testimony. Your testimony is how you found God. And everybody's not going to be the same. 
But your testimony and my testimony will affect people. I remember one time I was at the door with a lady in Indiana, and uh, I was telling her how God had changed my life, and I was so excited to serve God, and I was out knocking on doors, inviting people to church, and she said, she said, brother, she said, I don't, I don't know what you got, but I can see that you've got something that I want. Praise God. I don't know what it is that you've got, but I want what you've got. She said, you truly look happy. Praise God. Amen. I wasn't just thinking it. I was an empty soul when I came to God. Oh, yeah, I had a beautiful wife, two children, a nice job, a nice home to live in, a little Volkswagen to drive around in, but I was empty on the inside. And I could feel that emptiness. And one day I walked through an apostolic Pentecostal church, and I came through the back door. They were singing, What a friend we have of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. It wasn't long I was in the altar, and it wasn't too much longer after that. I had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. Oh, what a great day. Amen. What a great day. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm excited about this message tonight. I hope that uh, you got something out of it. Amen. It does bother me when I see the world is full of everything and they're not in any condition. As I close here, several years ago, I woke up and sat on the edge of my bed, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, my shadow is spreading across the earth. But he said, they're not ready. They're not ready. In other words, I'm just getting ready to come. You know, I, I passed the sun. I don't know how fast he's walking, but his shadow is spreading across the earth. He must be pretty close to getting here by now. That was a long time ago. That was back when Frida came into the church. And we hadn't even had the Holy Ghost yet. And uh, that was a long time ago. Wow. He said, my shadow is spreading across the face of the earth. Now, see, I don't talk like that, though, CJ. Do you know anybody that talks like that? My shadow is spreading across the face of the earth. I don't talk like that. I don't even think like that. That's how I knew it was God. You know, praise God. Hallelujah. But they're not ready. They're not ready. What do you say? Let's get ready, church, and stay ready uh, for the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See you next time.